Heavenly Father, we thank you that it was whilst we were yet sinners, when we were strengthless, when we were powerless, when we were without hope, when we were sinners, that Christ came into the world and died for us. Thank you that he didn't wait until he saw something good in us. There is nothing good in us. Thank you that he didn't look for something worthy because we are unworthy. Thank you that he came to die for sinners just like us. Father, we pray that we might rejoice and uh, delight in him today and we ask for the forgiveness of all our sins through his blood shed upon the cross of calvary father we commend ourselves to you now in jesus precious and holy name amen welcome to the spurgeon's devotional podcast a christian podcast desiring to honor the lord jesus christ this is the devotion for july the 14th he shall send them a savior and a great one Israel, by again sinning, fell under the tyranny of the Philistines, yet God did not forget his people, but raised them up a champion. An angel appeared to Manoah and his wife, foretelling the birth of a son who should deliver Israel. In due time, his promise was fulfilled by the birth of Samson, some incidents in whose history will now interest us. Judges 14 And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. Spurgeon says, thus the history of this strongest of men begins with an act of weakness, and his whole life is marred by faults in the same direction. An unusually developed animal nature rendered him the easy victim of his passions. If any of us were as vigorous as he, we should probably be even more ready to yield to the temptations which ensnared him. His faith in God was his peculiar virtue. In this, few, if any, of the saints excelled him, but his peculiar physical confirmation left an unguarded point in his character, and that proved his downfall. Verse 3, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Spurgeon says, It must always be grievous to right-minded parents to see their children marrying ungodly persons. No good can possibly come of it. It is most injurious to the soul and generally leads to heart-rending trials. Surely there are good people enough in the church of God without our looking to the synagogue of Satan for a spouse. Scripture says, And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Spurgeon says, This is too often the only reason men will give or can give for the course they pursue. It is the worst reason in the world for that which pleases our flesh is usually hurtful to our better nature. Let us never be slaves to our animal nature, but govern ourselves by the power of our mental and spiritual manhood. Verse 4, But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Spurgeon says they were not aware that God intended to overrule this, to force him into antagonism with the oppressors of his country. Verse 5, Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath, and came to the vineyards of Timnath, and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Spurgeon says, A supernatural might was given to him, and the strong lion fell before his unarmed strength. Yet as he was not proud or desirous of vain glory, he left the exploit untold. This was fine exercise for him, a grand preliminary trial of strength before his great battles with the enemy. Like David, he learned to fight Philistines by beginning with beasts. Verse 7, And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. And after a time he returned to take her, and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Spurgeon says, he remembered thankfully how the Lord delivered him and turned aside to survey the spot and his memory had its reward for he found the honey. It is well to recollect past mercies and learn how easily the Lord can turn our terrors into pleasures. Thus the lion yields us honey from the eater food is given. Verse 9, And he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. 
and came to his father and mother, and he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Spurgeon says, He preserved a singular silence, but great doers are frequently little talkers. Dr. Kitto very properly remarks, The whole of the affair of the lion is mentioned in the sacred narrative, not merely as an exploit, but on account of the circumstances which grew out of it. Samson doubtless performed many mighty feats which are not recorded, thus only being mentioned which directly influenced the current of his history and brought him more or less into collision with the Philistines. No one would have thought that out of his slaughter of the lion and the finding of a swarm of bees in the skin-enveloped carcass, occurring as it did while the hero was engaged in forming amicable relations with the Philistines, occasion for the exertion of his destroying energies against the oppressors of Israel would have arisen. But so it came to pass. Most unlikely agents, lions, bees, honeycombs, may become the instruments of accomplishing the purposes of God and of leading or driving a man to his appointed task when he thinks not of it. Verse 10. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. Spurgeon says, probably these thirty men, under the pretense of being boon companions, were set to watch him as spies. The friendship of Philistines should always be mistrusted. Scripture continues, And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if you can certainly declare it me without the seven days of the feast, within the seven days of the feast, rather, and find out, then I will give you thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. But if you cannot declare it me, then shall you give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle, that we may hear it. And he said unto them, Out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare us unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? Spurgeon says, Thus ill blood was engendered by the wedding festivities. How can we hope things to go well if we mingle with the unregenerate? Samson was acting very wrongly in all this, but God was overruling it to make him come forth as Philistia's foe and Israel's champion. Verse 16, And Samson's wife wept before him and said, Thou dost but hate me and lovest me not. Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people and hast not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, If ye had not ploughed with my heifer, ye had not found out my riddle. Spurgeon says, here he began to learn that a heathen wife was not to be trusted. How could he expect that she who worshipped a false god would be true to him? How sad it was that he did not profit by this experience. Verse 19, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Ashkelon and slew thirty men of them that took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. Spurgeon says, as the garments specified would only be worn by persons of wealth, Samson must have dealt the Philistines a heavy blow. Thirty men of rank would be sorely missed. Scripture continues, And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Spurgeon says, Thus Samson was used as God's executioner among the Philistines. But he himself was made to smart for his folly. His foolish love yielded him small solace, where he doted, he found deceit and desertion. It is perilous to any man to allow his weaker passions to become his guide. Sooner or later, sinful joys will curdle into miseries. Never let us run such risks as Samson's dared to encounter. Let his wreck be our beacon. The hymn is, Up, believer, face the lion. Thou shalt rend it like a kid. Jesus' mighty name, rely on. Face thy foe as thou art bid. Start not at his loudest roaring, slay him in Jehovah's strength, 
Then from forth his carcass pouring, honey shall be thine at length. Amen.